Hey, what's up, guys? Um, had a couple questions and some discussion going on about my do-it-yourself VFD AC unit and about the amps I'm reading on the line side going in and a couple different talks. As I said a couple days ago, there was like a, a forum I was reading on that. It was quite heated. <laughs> and, of course, in this conversation, you know, there's a lot of talk going back and forth. But basically, um, trying to understand some of this stuff, you know, but basically the line side input reads like 20 amps when my new VFD powered unit is on high speed and it's kind of warm out. That would be like, if you're reading that 20 amps the same way you would read a regular conventional just single phase motor um, going to a condensing unit, you'd be like, wow, that's like 5,000 watts. That'd be, that'd be like a five ton unit. But this is only a three ton unit. And if you read the output of my variable frequency drive, it's got running like 7.8 amps or whatever, you know, which any, I know this is a contested formula, but a lot of people seem to agree that in general, you multiply your output of a three phase times 1.732, I think is what the value was. And you, that number is pretty much about what you'd expect the single phase amperage to be. So it would be like 13 and a half amps, which is in the ballpark of what I would expect. So, but I'm reading like 20, but somebody I talked to like somewhere else, they were saying, I think you're reading like the quick high current pulses charging the capacitors through the rectifier. And when I thought about that, that makes sense. A lot of people keep wanting, they're talking about a um, power factor and they're talking about, you know, reactive and apparent power and all this stuff. And I remember kind of going through that a little bit and learning about that a couple years ago. And if you go on back on my channel, actually... At this facility I was at, the director there actually bought us one of those $5,000 fluke power analyzers where you hooked up the amp probes and the voltage probes at the same time, and it showed you the uh, how the voltage and the current would like be out of phase, out of relationship, you know, when the power factor was way off, and we corrected that with like these power factor correcting capacitors, basically, that you just bolted in parallel to the windings of the motor, and we, and we kind of tighten that up, but... Uh, the way they explain that is you have power that charges up your motor windings, and then you um, you have you know power that actually goes into doing the work. Well, if you have like a big load imbalance, you're gonna ha you're not putting all that work into the motor. So as the field collapses or whatever, I guess some of that energy goes back into the grid, and then in the next cycle, you know, in your 60 hertz cycle, you know, it's charging up the magnetic field again. And with the capacitors, it actually just goes back and charges the capacitors, and then you know, right there locally at the motor. And actually your, so your power you read on your line side coming from your utility where it goes down when you add those power factor capacitors. That is if your power factor was way off, you know, usually from when I see like a larger motor used and it's needed. All right, well, before I, I just, I could get care of that. And I only got so deep into that anyway, but here's like a, it's like a photo I was looking at. We're talking about a single phase rectification into a bank of capacitors. Obviously, um, if you're going through diodes, right? Let me see. Let me get a picture of that. Got your bridge rectifier. Here's your AC source. So on the positive side, this will be more positive. So it's going to go through this way to the positive of the capacitor. And this is negative at this point. It's going to go through um, this one and go back to negative. And then when it's the other way around, when this side's more positive, it'll steer this way. And the other one will steer this way to the negative. And you, so basically, you got check valves right here, think of it. So you're charging the capacitor and when the voltage drops lower than here, and this was the same argument people were talking about in that engineering forum I was at. They're trying to talk about like power factors and, and everything and compare it and people are like, dude, this is, these are diodes. When this voltage is higher than this voltage, it doesn't go back. So how is it going back into the grid? It doesn't go back into the grid. So someone, some people are kind of saying that a little bit on my video now and I'm kind of trying to figure out if they're meaning something else, if that's what they're trying to say. But Anyway, power isn't going to go backwards through diodes and go back into the grid. It's just once the uh, voltage um, on the AC is less than the current voltage in the capacitor, just no current's going to flow. Not until the capacitor voltage is below the amplitude of the sine wave. So let's go to what I was kind of figuring out here. And that picture's not as clear. Is like this. You got So here's one... Um, cycle right here, one cycle. So normally um, you're running a motor and a coil 
resistor, whatever. As soon as you're off the, you know, got voltage difference, there's going to be current. So current flows all the time. It just amp goes in higher and higher in amplitude, and then it starts dropping in amplitude. But it's still conducting this whole time, right? It's still conducting. It's still got current all the way down here to this axis. And then when the voltage starts the other way, it repeats the same thing, but in the other polarity. And the current goes the other way. You, amplitude goes up. And then as the amplitude drops, you're still got current flow this whole time. Your meter is reading like the true RMS, which is, I guess, a calculation they use for calculating a more proper average, if I dare say that word, for sine, you know, sine waves. That's what the, the true RMS is for. That's what they say. So, But in, when you're charging capacitors, it's totally different. So you, you're going through a bridge rectifier, which basically takes this other half and makes it always positive ripple. So this is one cycle now of your 60 hertz one cycle so you're going to get two charging pulses once your capacitor is already charged the first time it's going to charge up the whole time which is what they're trying to show that charged up the whole time with the sine wave and then the sine wave reaches reaches its you know peak and then it's even with it and the capacitor starts dropping and then the capacitor holds its charge as the sine wave drops down and then as the sine wave comes up it's not no current flow still until it reaches the point of where the discharging capacitor is now less than the incoming voltage amplitude and then you get current flow and right here in this little area right here let's do this so we can see it right here that's all the current you get so if a cycle is this much time you get blip blip Blip, blip, each, that's the only time you ever get any current flow below what the capacitors are charged as the sine wave drops down. It stops completely. But that wasn't true with the motor. With the motor, you fully get in current flow. It just diminishes until you get to the axis where it crosses over, and then you start gaining amplitude again the other direction. So with capacitors, you're, it's, it's, it's different. And so the meter is just seeing a quick pulse. And it's a higher current pulse, though, but it's quick. almost forgot to show you one thing here. So this was the single phase rectification that you'd expect and the ripple and whatnot. So, but if you look at just real quick, I'm trying to line these up to where the time, it looks like this peaks here and this peaks here. So the time should be about the same right here. If I just plant this here, just to show you these uh, peaks, how far apart they are on single phase. When they take three phase and then, you know, full wave rectification, there's a lot closer uh, peaks. So instead of, uh, like, say, if we just follow just the yellow one here, you get the charge, the capacitor charging up, and then it's just going to charge up on. It's going to charge up on each one of these peaks, like this. You're going to have all these charging peaks. So pretty much, you got two of them here within one cycle. But let me line these back up. But right now, you got one, two, three, four, five, basically the six. You know, makes sense. Six of them instead of two peaks, you know, on the three phase. So your capacitor is only just charging, you know, got a lot quicker little ripples there than you would with the single phase. And I imagine the current pulses are probably a lot less instead of, uh, you know, such huge spikes. So I don't know, the amp probe might still be not very accurate on reading each independent leg of the three phase as well. But, and I do always notice there's a difference, come to think of it, when I read them. So perhaps I should start reading my VFDs on the output consistently when I take my motor reading logs on equipment, because sometimes I just read them on the input. So it might be a little eye-opener there. Let's go back to the rest of the video. I don't believe that meters I have are going to give me the proper amps. I don't know how to explain it, but the reading on my meter is just not comparable to when you're reading like a motor or something, like the, mo the amp meter was made to read. So I would need something else to probably properly calculate it. So knowing that the output of my VFDs are correct, there's going to be so much efficiency in the VFD, but it's going to be in the 90 something percent. Not very much loss. Output that I'm reading going to the compressor, you know, like I said, equals like 13 and a half amps after you calculate it for a single phase input. That's in the ballpark. 19, 20 amps that I'm reading with my clamp meter. At first, it spooked me, and I'm like, dude, I'm using way more power. This is like using the power of a five-ton. And I just didn't think that this is how the current goes. But being that I do do electronics, I just never paid attention to this very much. 
Um, it made sense once somebody just made me think about it. I think this is all it is. And um, how long this is depends on, you know, how fast the capacitor drops down is how big of a load you got. So if it drops down sharper, obviously, you know, you're going you're gonna to get current earlier. But I was getting like 20 volt ripples out of, uh, you know, 300 and something volts peak to peak. Your 230 volt, you know, RMS sine wave of coming out of your utility, you know, is really like over 300. It's like 320 something or whatever peak to peak. So um, seeing 20 something volt ripple on the DC bus is not that much. It's always going to be a ripple. It has to be a ripple. If it didn't drop down after the peak, it wouldn't pull current. So my drawing here might be shite, but, but anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you guys that. I don't know what kind of how much duty that is out of each sine wave, but it's got to be, you know, a lot less than this. Of course, you get peak amplitude at the peaks every time right here, the same way. However, you're still got current you know, increasing from zero up to peak and then back to zero along the way of those peaks. You know, it reads correctly with the meter. It just isn't reading correctly, <laughs> uh, feeding into the rectifiers, into a bank of capacitors, that's all. So, like somebody says, I probably don't even need to worry about it. But being the geek that I am, I would like to hook something up just to look at it. Someday I might try to get a coil, hook up to it. Um, I did have a VFD out there. Somebody told me to take like current sensing coils out of a VFD. Well, I did have a big 480 one down there, but I looked at it and they were like these big heavy duty, like one soldered to a circuit board with some solid state stuff attached. So I said, like, screw that. Anyway, it's kind of just all I wanted to show you guys. And uh, the unit's been doing okay. It, it uh, oh, it dropped down to one stage since we've been sitting here talking. Um, I have it programmed to once it gets within a degree of my set point, it drops the first stage. Once it exceeds a degree, it goes to two stage. Pretty straightforward setup. And that smaller unit, which is three tons now, is hanging in there. It's starting to cool off now that it's going to be about 710. It's about down to 106, but I do think it was up to uh, 108. Oh, 112. 112 was our peak today. Nice. So, yeah, it's dropping down now. So. I'm running my unit cooler than I used to before, and it's maintaining. That's all that matters, right? So with that, I'll let this video go. Just give you guys something to think about. Um, also gives me something to think about, and uh, we'll keep messing with this along the way. I'm still carry on the conversations with the guys in there. It's kind of cool that uh, some of these engineer guys kind of like, I don't know how, but they just kind of find my videos. Maybe they're not totally HVAC guys. I don't know, but it's cool to engage in the conversation and whatnot. That makes you guys like and subscribe. Catch you later.